Well, my name is Dr. Wayne Sedlak, and this is Vision Viewpoint. With me today is Mr. Bill Savage. Bill, glad to, I'm, I'm certainly glad to have you here. Bill, you're here. running for the Hartford School Board, high school school board. Now, tell me, I can ask why is that important, but we all know education is important. There's a burden that you've assumed, you have a background in this field, an extensive background, dealing with education, both up in Madison and locally been active for the sake of our young people. So, Bill, first of all, tell me the election or the primary, the nonpartisan primaries on February 16th. Is that right? That is correct. Sir. And then um, two out of what? Five candidates will be chosen? Four out of five. Four There's out five of five. Five candidates right okay, now. Okay, so four out of five. For, for two seats. And then uh, after the, the February 16th primary, four will move on to the general April, election. To the general election in April. Right. Yes. Okay. So February 16th is your opportunity to, to vote, and I want you to hear what Bill has to say and why you people in Hartford and surrounding areas. Now, it's Hartford, it's what, Richfield, it's Aaron, is that right? Neosho, Neosho Rubicon. Rubicon. Hartford, okay, yeah. good. Yeah. That's the Hartford school board you're running for. Yeah. All right. Bill, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, what okay. you've done. Um, I mean, it's I, extensive. We could spend the rest of the of our discussion on your background, but give me some of the highlights. Well, I've been a research assistant at the uh, Wisconsin State Capitol uh, for the legislature since uh, January 2005. Uh, I worked for uh, State Representative Don Pridemore, who had a interest in education. He was the chairman of the uh, urban education, and he was the chairman of the uh, education reform committee. Right. So I was the clerk, and right. we got familiar with, uh, you know, all kinds of educational issues, and seen both sides of, you know, the perspective there. And that's uh, under what three governors you've been uh, you've endured. Uh, I've, we've done eight budgets under three three governors. You've uh, been a heavy participant in all that. Yes. Yes. Okay. We, you know, the legislature uh, comes over. I'm pretty good. Uh, yep. So, yep. So I, I do have a, a pretty solid understanding of how schools are funded, uh, which is, is which is key for a school board member. Well, where the money goes, that's where everything else falls. To, to, exactly. Um, so I was on the joint one school board uh, here in Hartford for six years. Right. Um, and then I was on the Hartford Board of Education for six years as well. I took a couple of years off and now we're, I'm looking to return. Uh, I'm running uh, as a kind of a, a team effort with uh, a woman named Heather Rodriguez, who is a uh, fine, outstanding of, you know, she's a mom, mother of, of, of six, and, and uh, she's a stand-up conservative, and she knows how to voice her opinion, and, and I think she's going to be a fine addition. Um, so we're, we're looking to, to we, we don't see an issue, we, we, we see an opportunity, and we see an opportunity to guide the Hartford High School you know, curriculum, and, and we have, a, right now, the focus is on college prep, uh, and we also think we can chew gum and walk at the same time. Sure. Uh, we should sure. have a, also an emphasis on the skilled trades. Uh, and everybody, we've been talking about getting the skilled trades going for 20 years, uh, which reminds me of the, you know, was the attic where you could fall asleep for 100 years, and when you wake up, everything was changed. Except education. public education. Right, that's right. You know, so... So there's uh, an opportunity to make the, those kinds of changes. There's a, a, a great opportunity for, for that. Uh, kids need to know critical thinking. They need to learn critical thinking. So in other words, they're being taught, if I understand what you mean, and you and I talked a little bit beforehand, and I think this needs to be borne out. Too often kids are taught what to think, but not how to think. Uh, it, I mean, that's it, your it's phrase. Imperative. It, that's it, your phrase. It's imperative that they learn critical thinking. To do that, they have to learn various yeah. sides of the issues. They have to know what the facts are and how to argue them, how to defend them. That's so exactly. you're bringing that, I've heard you say that. And so uh, 
what opportunity? Now, I, I realize Slinger is right next to you folks. You're always comparing, or not you, but people compare. The Slinger no. Skull, right? Yeah, the, the, exactly, exactly. I spent six years uh, on the high school board of education, and I know that the administration uh, is always concerned that they're losing kids to, to Slinger. To Slinger. I believe that we could reverse that completely. So um, you can, you want to compare favorably, I, so people start considering Hartford. I, I think that Hartford has the tools and the programs and the facilities and the and the, and, and the personnel to if if we could if we could convince parents that their kids are going to graduate from Hartford High School with the ability to think critically, to have an understanding of the, the, the Constitution, uh, understand that the difference between socialism and capitalism right. and, and, and everything that that brings with it. Um, I think that there'll be a line waiting to get in. Right. So that's what I... The, you mentioned that's also the opportunity that well, you mentioned the Constitution. What do you see as a void there in understanding? Well, just I mean the, the biggest one, and now you, you always would, would refer to the Second Amendment and and the kids thinking that you know it's about hunting. Uh, it's not about hunting, right? And it's not about personal protection. Uh, it's about being able to defend yourself. Against a free, it's a free nation, uh, 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 and, the free and keeping it free. That's right, and keeping uh, it free. However, we now see where the First Amendment is is in jeopardy. Is, is, That's right. is really in jeopardy. Uh, we have to have a. Uh, the First Amendment isn't just about speech that you like. Well, the, I like the, speech the, and <laughs> assembly. It's, it's about speech That's that uh, it's about everyone right. being able to engage and express in, themselves, in, sure. Express themselves and engage in right. in, in in debate. Right. Uh, and th that it's being taken away. It's, That's right. It's, it's, yeah, it's eroding, it and the and we need to get back to those bases. So it right. isn't just about what, well, like you said, like what you might want. It's about what. People have well, but people have the freedom to express themselves without fear of reprisals, without fear of being slandered, attacked, maligned, threatened, well, or you, sued. You can now lose your job, right, for saying all lives matter. Right. It's it's just it, it's a scary it's a scary time. That's right. It, it really is. That's right. Um, so, in any event, you're asking for. A little bit of a return, no, well, not a little bit, a, a return to historic values. Uh, you would say conservative values. I would too. Bringing those back so that there's a there's a fair interchange of ideas, fair presentation in the classroom. Right. So again, the, the kids aren't told what to believe; they're told how. Right. We're we're not asking how to think. You no, know, we wouldn't be asking for kids to only hear. A conservative side of the equation. Right. We just want them to hear a fair, balanced d debate so that they can learn how to right. critically right. think. So when you do that, <coughs> what you're what you're asking for is a return to what was once done: civics, constitution, history. I grew up with those courses. Right. I had right. those. Right. And now, as I go back to my home state. I mean, this is home now, but as I go back to where I was raised, it was not taught. I've had an educational background in the past 40 years. I've been involved, as you know, I'm a professor at the graduate level. So I understand something about education. I go back home and ask the questions. And so my colleagues give me this daring headlights look. Well, what do you mean? That hasn't been around for a while. The Constitution is not taught, and if it is taught, it is certainly not a balanced approach, nor an historic approach, not even by Supreme Court standards, historic. So what you're doing is you're asking for a curriculum. That's really what this is. And the teachers that can, so shall we say, endorse the curriculum. In other words, learn it. Here's both sides of the, of the issue. So a curriculum that returns to the historic values, conservative values, that pretty well distinguishes Hartford, that whole area. But, and to be clear, 
nobody suggesting that teachers get together at at lunch and and, and plot ways to indoctrinate right, right, kids. Right. There's nothing like that. Anything. That's right. But they, but it's clear that the liberal bias seeps through That's right. in a lot of areas right. where the conservative perspective uh, is. That's right. It's, it's kind of stifled. That's and, right. And well, very often, you know, and you, know, you and I both know. Yeah, yeah. You and I both know teachers often are stuck with the curriculum they're given. Yeah. It's ordered from the yeah. top. Right. I know that. You know right. that. It's yeah. a very few who make some of those decisions. So we don't have to have teachers being accused of meeting in secret groups. We're not going right, there. Right. That's, that's not what that's we're talking not, about. Right, that's not happening. But right. very often, they're as muzzled or tied. They're stuck with the curriculum, and they're told, this is what you're going to teach. Right. Been there. Done that. The point, though, you want that to be freed up a bit so that we have what the people of Hartford want. A more conservative constituency wants the values that they try and teach in their homes. Well, I think it, if you're going to have fair and balanced, there has to be a concerted effort to achieve that that balance. And so to have that, you need a voice on the it's, school it's, board to do it. It's just simply not going to that's happen right. on, on, on its own. And that's why uh, they need a voice on the school board. That's, that's exactly right. So uh, Bill... <coughs> Some other opportunities. Now, I know you mentioned before we came on a little bit. We talked um, Hartford. Hartford can offer the uh, does offer the college prep, but it can offer the skilled trades. Well, we Hartford has a they a, have a, a solid skilled trades program. So now, where would you go with that? Because I think it's a great so opportunity. There's there's always it seems of in in. For, for the perspective, right. uh, or perception, I should say, that there's a trade-off between whether you're either going to be a college prep school, right. or you can be a skilled trade school, or, or have a you know a, a top-notch tech department. Uh, we can do both. Uh, we have the resources, uh, and that's a little bit of comes back to our. Our largeness, uh, you know, uh, you know. So to favorably compete, I mean to really compete, so that people, so you reverse the flow of students coming to Hartford. You need to have that. Yep. You need to have both emphases. Is what you're saying. Right. And of yeah. course, with that, the critical thinking that you've emphasized already. And a, and a fair and balanced education. Right. right. And I think that that, I, I think that that's what parents are looking for, uh, and students are looking for and we can offer it to them. There's nothing stopping us. So. Bill, others running, and I don't want to make this a, a, a battle or if there is one. What are you hearing out there in general without naming? I, I, I have not heard. There's a, a forum coming up uh, next Monday. Uh, Where would that be? The, at the high school. Okay. Uh, and I have not. I have, that's all I've heard. Uh, I've heard a few people refer to somebody as being, oh, they're a, a liberal, or you know, this person's a a, a Trump supporter, or but all I, kinds I, of different. Right, I have, right. I have not. I, I've never really heard of any of these other people running, with the exception of Heather, who I. Right, been working right. with uh, sure. for quite some time. So, so given that, you believe that these issues um, should be presented. Should well, be I, do, I think that in other words, you're representing something, not right, just running for the board. And, and I and and I I believe that I, I don't want to be elected because people recognize my name. Right. You know that. I, I want to be elected because people know what I'm about and and what I'll bring to the table. See, it's and, not, and yours is not a political as so much as it is a concern for the area you've lived in. That's, that's correct. That's really what it amounts to, which I believe is what education should be. Instead of being politicized, it's a matter of really caring for our future. And our kids are the future. That's really the yeah. issue. That's what I've heard you say elsewhere. That's what I believe. If you're if you're going to be a successful leader in, in tomorrow, you know tomorrow, you have to learn critical thinking today. 
right. you, you have to be skeptical of what somebody's telling you. You have to, you have to hear the, the two sides of an argument, and you have to balance them, and you have to decide what you know. Okay, those are some good points, and those are some good points, and, right. and sure. you know, and this is the way it, it should be, and this is the way that it is, and and how do we combine those two? And, and sure. So, so there'd be a fair hearing anyway. Um, of conservative values, you'd be sp outspoken on that. You'd like to see those values at least presented. Well, to go through a, a reading list, uh, add there some, add some materials to the. Uh, there's some great books out there by some conservative authors. That's right. And, That's right. And we could add them to the That's right. reading list. So, yeah. So, Bill. <coughs> Where has education gone? You said earlier, you know, kind of the old saw, uh, fall asleep for 100 years, and everything will change except education. Where well, has that been? Let's bring that Well, let's, here. let's just talk about virtual education. Uh, I was, when one of the first issues that we dealt with uh, early on in the, in the mid-2000s was Governor Doyle wanted to cap virtual schools. Uh, and it, it, there was already about 8,000 students I involved in virtual school programs, and, and he wanted to cap it to 5,000. And so we had a lot of upset parents saying, my kid is doing really well. And, and, and virtual education is not, is not a replacement for brick and mortar schools. There are certain kids. Well, it's freedom. People right. can exist the, side by side. The it's choice it's they want. The choices and, and, and choices aren't just about freedom. They're about efficiencies. They're about right. well, right. your, this works for me and this works for them right. and, and, and something sure. else works for somebody else. But a high learner, a high efficient learner, a kid who just soaks it up and is interested in these things, uh, you can go through the virtual program and and you can just learn that an accelerated pace sure and and the teacher doesn't have to worry about That's right the, about leaving the rest of the kids behind right on the other end of the spectrum a kid who has to review things three or four times before they go on to the next segment right um, need some extra help if, 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 need if some they're hands in a brick and mortar right. school they could be, while the class is moving on, they could be stuck over here. Right. And if you don't have this block, building block of math, uh, then you're not going to get this, you're not going to get that. Right. You're going to be completely lost, and you're going to give up. Right. So th those two ends, the, the, the virtual schools really do have a, a, a place. Uh, also... When you have a teacher in a virtual setting, and everyone's on their computer, the whole day that they spend is one-on-one -on -one education, right? Because right. because they're not in front of a class teaching, and then in order to provide some one-on-one, -on -one, it has to be after school or in the evening or you know all all they do for the most part is a one-on-one -on -one education. Uh, so we we had that fight back in the, the mid-2000s. Right. And, and it became clear that the Department of Public Instruction just had no appetite to put together some quality programs. You know, so that's, and, and now all of a sudden, we could really use some quality virtual programs right. while we get through the pandemic and, right. and this and right. the other thing. So, so that's a, the more choices that parents and students have, the better off everybody is. We're so back to freedom. And, and, right. and, and, and right. competition, you know, uh, you know, you're a monopoly. I mean, remember Lily Tomlin, you know, right. we, we don't care, we don't have to, we're the phone company. That's remember right. That? <laughs> I remember, that's right. That's you right. Know, so. so with more freedoms, more opportunities, greater efficiencies can be achieved with the resource that we've got. We can compete then in Hartford, that's what you're telling us. Oh, yeah. Oh, so. yeah. There's no question. Everything, everything we need is right there.
So, Bill, I want to thank you for coming on. Huh? Well, I want to thank you for having me. And again, folks, remember, it, it's a nonpartisan race. It's February 16th, people in Hartford and uh, areas like Neosho and uh, others, Rubicon, you have your opportunity here for, uh, and again, go through that with me again. There's five running, four will be chosen the, for this Five primary. running and four will move on to the April election. Okay, a and April two what, seats. April 6th? <laughs> April 6th. Right. So you have your opportunity to do something about it. If you, if you believe that a, a, um, an opportunity exists in Hartford School District, uh, Bill Savage, I believe, is the man that you ought to get out and support. So, Bill, again, thank you for coming on Vision Viewpoint. Appreciate having me. Take care. God bless you.